Okay, so this is the January 8th, 2020 uh, meeting of the Community Resources Committee, um, starting at 9, calling to order at 9.34 a.m. Um, we have a quorum present, and our first item of business is general public comment, um, so I will open it up. Is there any from the public? Not seeing any, we will move on to our item 3A, which is the percent for art bylaw proposal that has been referred to us through the percent for art ad hoc bylaw, I don't know what its total name was, ad hoc committee, <laughs> bylaw ad hoc committee, working, um, working group. Um, but so it, was a committee. It, was a, it was an ad hoc committee, I think. Um, but, but they've finished their work and they've referred it on to finance and to CRC per the referral from and the charge on the town council. And so we have um, here to talk a little bit about that um, Bill Kazin, who is the chair of the Public Art Commission, you're welcome to come on up and all. Um, we also have, just for the public's reference, Andy Steinberg was on the ad hoc committee working on the language. Um, and one other CRC member, Steve Schreiber, who will be here a little late today, was also on that ad hoc committee. Um, so we're actually well represented from the people who worked on the language today. So um, welcome, Bill. Thank you. Um, and thank you for your service on the Public Art Commission. Um, and yeah. Give us an idea of what this is and why it's in front of us and what you guys did to it. I know it was in town meeting at some point and there's some changes to that. So, you know, let's give us an idea. Okay, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm here, my name's William Kazin, Bill Kazin. I'm the chair of the Public Art Commission and um, I'm here to speak for the Percent for Art bylaw. Um, let's see, I don't wanna go back over the whole history of it in great detail but I will just say that it was originally presented to town meeting um, by, uh, <clears throat> um, by Eric Brody, who at that time was on the percent for, was on the Public Art Commission. He was not yet the chair. He subsequently became the chair, and um, which then passed to me. Uh, he's currently not on uh, the, um, the commission at this point. But town meeting did pass a previous version of the, the bylaw. It got hung up uh, at the state level for a variety of reasons, <clears throat> came back to the town, and then um, that bylaw was never enacted. And so now that the uh, council has been seated um, as somebody who joined the Public Art Commission expressly to work on this bylaw because I was excited about it and I really thought it was a great program for the for the town, it sort of has fallen to me to um, try to see that it actually does get passed and to realize what I think at that time anyway was the will of the town as enacted by <coughs> town meeting. So I've worked with Eric who's been involved in this whole process even since his time on the commission as well as with this ad hoc committee. So I'd like to thank um, Kathy Shane who was the chair of the committee, Andy Steinberg and Steve Schwartz from the council um, Jim Barnhill and myself were there representing the, the, the Public Art Commission. Uh, and Eric also was in all of the meetings and really sat at the table in many ways as an equal um, partner in helping us think through how we might rework it uh, for uh, the, the town. Uh, Sonia Aldrich was also there for almost all of the meetings and gave us a lot of really important and key feedback in this process um, regarding town finances and how the town might be able to afford to structure this as well as pay for it. It was a great, uh, it was actually a great um, working committee. We had a, uh, I think, a very productive um, series of meetings and then, we, you know, and we worked quickly, I think, and we produced what we feel is a, a strong new version of this bylaw, so I look forward to the conversation today. Um, so I'm not gonna give a big PowerPoint presentation uh, if and when it comes back to the full council. I can do that again, I've done it in the past. I just wanna go over fairly quickly the, the major changes we've made because frankly, we completely rewrote this bylaw and um, uh, I think we came out with a better bylaw in the end. We made, from my point of view, big, big compromises, but I think actually in the end it'll be better for the town given the financial constraints on the town and what's possible at this moment. Um, so the biggest changes are <clears throat> that, um, and one of the things we were tasked with was fixing the problem um, that got this thing hung up at the state level in the first place. And in the previous version, there was a provision that was going to set up a fund to hold money beyond the yearly budget cycle. And that would have had to have been approved at the state level. And the, um, it got through the house and actually even mostly through 
the Senate, there were three hearings in the Senate, and the Department of Revenue attorney had some questions and flagged it. And it, the issues were all surrounding, for the most part, whether or not we could hold money in a fund and how that would be structured beyond a year. So we completely took that out. Um, the reason why that had been in there originally was because in town meeting, some town meeting members wanted to see the town support the performing arts as well as the visual arts. And I am 100% in favor of that. Um, but in order to do that, for complicated reasons, uh, we set up this, this piece that would have held money. Uh, <clears throat> and that, that's what kind of tanked the previous version. So unfortunately, we had to pull that whole piece out. And in the current version, there will no longer, as it's written, be any support for the performing arts. Um, but hopefully, we can find other ways to fund those in the future. Um, the other really big change was that the trigger for uh, this went from 100,000 to, uh, to a million, which, um, which basically the reason why it was so low before was because the idea was to have uh, less expensive projects be set aside in this fund that could then be used for, for performing art projects. As, as we took that piece out, then it made much more sense to raise the trigger so that now this will only be triggered for um, what we expect would be projects that would go out for bond, bond funding <clears throat> and, uh, you know, as tied to the four big capital projects, probably debt overrides, or at least for, for one of them, if not more. So that's a, a very big change to how we're thinking about this. The idea <clears throat> for the new version is that um, it would have minimal impact on, on taxes in the sense that it wouldn't be competing with other capital projects. It would be folded into the construction costs of any given, uh, any given project, uh, of these big, these big new capital projects, and wouldn't be competing with, um, with other projects that were happening in town at the same time. Um, Another big change that we made is that, that we've given town council the power to lower or even eliminate uh, this bylaw by majority vote uh, at, at any point, particularly our thinking was that if the town did hit rocky financial uh, circumstances as it did in 2008 with the Great Recession, it would allow the council to not eliminate the bylaw. Um, if it passes it, uh, as Lynn said at the previous meeting, it would have the intent to have this up and running in perpetuity, but it would give the council the opportunity um, at, a, at, a, at a moment of financial crisis to say, you know what, it's not appropriate at this time to do it. You know, let's put it on hold. We can come back to it when things have changed at the state level, at the, at the federal level, or when um, the town is, is, is more flush with, with, uh, with money for various opportunities for the arts. Um, the other thing is that we've given the, um, the, the town manager or the town manager in, in consultation with the uh, Public Art Commission the ability to kill the project if it gets hung up by the artist at any point because we absolutely do not want these projects to hold up any of these big, big construction projects in any way. And so let's say we choose an artist and that artist is fickle to work with or problematic or the project gets caught up for whatever reason. Um, the, if, if it's going to hold up the construction project beyond any reasonable length of time, we also created the possibility of the power for the town to, to, to stop it. Um, and then the other thing that came up was this issue of, of how we define where these things would go. And uh, in part, this came from a conversation with Andy and, and, and things that he was very interested in seeing in there. Um, so it was about public accessibility and whether or not the buildings that these were going to be in would be publicly accessible and in what ways. And so we define public accessibility in such a way that, for example, if a DPW building was built on some remote plot of land out in the middle of nowhere down a dirt road that the public generally wouldn't have access to, then potentially it would not trigger this bylaw. There's some flexibility there or some, uh, uh, we could have a conversation about that, but that was how we sort of thought about it in this current version of the bylaw. Uh, everything else was mostly Scrivener's changes or responses to comments from town staff. Um, you know, this, the previous version went out to town staff and got a whole raft of comments, and we really sat down and tried to answer every single one of them and tried to um, not just answer them, but actually change the bylaw in response to what was being asked of us. So we really tried to, in every possible way, we tried to be flexible um, and make this thing work. Um, one of the things that I was very sensitive to was making sure that the town manager was given appropriate appointing authority throughout. In the previous version, that was a little bit unclear or there were moments when I felt like he should have appointing authority or, you know, for the uh, jurying process, et cetera. Um, and so I, we made sure that that was cleaned up as much as we could. Um, and, then, and then we just tried to simplify clarity 
clarify, simplify, and focus the intent of the, of the bylaw. So to conclude, I would just say that we've presented this to the Finance Committee. It got unanimous support from finance, um, and they're working on a report, which I haven't seen yet, um, that's going to be written by Kathy uh, uh, in support of, of this version of the bylaw. There were still a few minor language issues that were flagged in the version that you have um, that we wanted to check with, with Paul, the town manager, KP Law potentially, and Sonia, just to make sure that um, you know, some of those things are correct. And it will go to GOL, of course, who will have lots of things to say about the minutiae of the language. Um, and then I would just say, finally, that there's really never going to be a better time to do this than I can imagine. You know, our, our, uh, we're, our debt is, is going down, and our bond rating is high, and um, we have these big projects coming down the pike. And so um, if we can tie, you know, a, a, a wonderful uh, art project to, to all or some of these, of these construction projects, I think it'll be a, a boon to the town economically socially for both visitors, for people who live here, people who work in these buildings. So um, I am excited to, with the new version and I'm hoping that we can figure out a way to come to a, a version that everybody can be happy with and get through the council. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what, how we're gonna do this discussion I think is to first ask questions of, if we have any questions about the bylaw, any questions about the wording, We've got Bill here, we've got Andy here, we've got people who work directly on it. Let's start with those questions and then once we've answered questions like that or, or you know, we can move on to a discussion that relates to whether we're going to recommend the council adopt it or not. Um, and, and those, any concerns we have about, any concerns or non-concerns we have about the bylaw itself regarding a recommendation. But I thought we'd start with questions first. So are there any questions regarding what it applies to, it's, you know, any of that. Dorothy. Only when you read it aloud did I begin to worry about the delay part. I was thinking, don't we need a Michelangelo exception? Because sometimes something really wonderful is happening, but it might delay something. Yes, so the idea is that there's a conversation that would happen, it's in consultation, and so um, it would be, I, I, for sure, conversation between the artist, the town manager, the chair of the Public Art Commission, um, and obviously council would be able to weigh in. So uh, absolutely, I, I wouldn't you know automatically kill an art project, especially if you're close to you know. There's a conversation that would take place. Would it also potentially depend on where on the plot of land it's going? If it's an outside standalone structure, that affects less timing than yes. if it's like integral to somewhere on the wall or something and yes. it's part of a structural element. Yes, and I, Andy's about to speak and I know what he's gonna say. <laughs> well, I think I do. <clears throat> Maybe I should let, I, I defer. <laughs> I, okay. Could you, I think an issue has come up relative to whether or not um, when we go out for uh, bond funding for these construction projects, these projects have to be integrated directly into the building or if they can be adjacent to the building or how far away. And so that's one of our, that's one of our outstanding questions that needs to be clarified. So Sonia will reach out to bond council to, to make sure that we know. <clears throat> so obviously if it's gonna be for the elementary school project, wouldn't it be amazing to have one of these um, uh, you know, Ferris wheel type projects that I showed or playground projects that I showed previously to the council but that wouldn't be integrated into the building itself. It would be next to the building or in the playground area. Would that be possible? We're not entirely sure. So that's an outstanding question. But that's, yeah, to your point. Andy? Yeah, I, I was gonna, um, first of all, I have to start by saying I really um, appreciated working with the ad hoc committee. It was a great group that worked together very effectively. And I think we identified problems and then really worked hard together to address them. And it was um, one of the better processes that I've worked on in time. And I'm uh, really excited about the outcome that we have. Uh, as far as the, the, the whole thing of public accessibility, uh, when you get to, you know, the, the idea is that if you, you want to make the, we wanted to make the art accessible to the public so that if you have a building that is not in and of itself used by the public or visible to the public, but said the entrance is accessible and visible to the public, that's something that should be considered. 
think what we wanted to do was to um, create maximum flexibility to the process that um, visualizes and creates the art and um, not uh, do anything in the bylaw that um, limits that creativity because that's what art is all about. Um, and uh, the uh, concern of the staff about uh, not letting the process of the uh, creation of the art delay the construction of the project um, is a uh, reasonable concern and we didn't think that um, it was a barrier that it was, uh, but it was just something that we recognized as important and uh, I think is a soluble and has, um, we've created I think a structure that does that. Um, so um, the two other things I wanted to just comment on to, um, to supplement is that a lot of this had to do with um, how things are funded, it was um, certainly, it, it, we got gummed up because of, as Bill said, the um, performance part of the art, but there were also this thing, any time that you raise funds and then don't spend them right away or don't spend them for the purpose for which they're raised, um, creates all sorts of le um, legal problems and financial problems as to how the money is held and accounted. And uh, that played out for that, it played out for the small art projects, as Bill said. Um, it played a, again into the question of maintenance of art also, because there was a question of having funds available that could be held into the future for maintenance, and that's why maintenance is treated as it is in the uh, new version of the bylaw, but all of that is really to address the central issue that really got to what um, caused the Department of Revenue attorney to say, hey, wait a minute, we have some problems here with this, and that kept the Senate then from finishing the process in the last bylaw and why it died. And uh, so I think that we did, for all sorts of reasons, um, say, well, um, we still had a great idea and uh, we got the feedback and let's work with it. Uh, the last thing I wanted to report is, is that the Finance Committee is very close to uh, finished on its work, but there is one piece that um, is coming up. When uh, major projects come along or any project that's going to be bon bonded, which is probably all of the kinds of things that we're talking about, uh, it's the, the effect of the bond comes in one of two ways, depending upon whether the bond is going to be funded just through town finances and um, paid back on an, an annual basis, but is uh, being done within the general budget process. And um, the other is if you end up saying, well, we don't have enough funds, but we're going to have to ask voters for a debt exclusion. So. Um, what we're trying to do is to be uh, clear with um, the public and with the council about what the cost would be in either of those two scenarios because if it is to be um, just funded through um, the town budget process with um, authorization of debt to be, be paid from the um, uh, budget in future years, then the question is, what is the annual payment? Because that comes out of the whatever amount is set aside for future years for capital. Um, and it really is not going to appear to be a large amount of money in the end. It's not going to keep us from uh, um, doing a major piece of road work or buying an, um, a truck or uh, making a significant investment, uh, but we want to put the number and um, so we're waiting for Sonia to finish that. Uh, she's given us some rough estimates, but she was going to give us some exact, more exacting estimates. 
And then the other is if you do it by debt exclusion, um, how many uh, pennies per year get added to the average taxpayer's uh, tax bill as a result. And uh, so um, as soon as we uh, get that back from Sonia, uh, it can get plugged into a draft that Kathy's already developed and then voted on. And we hope that that happens at the January, uh, I think it's 28th uh, Finance Committee meeting. But um, we are, uh, moving along with it. Um, however, the questions, um, and this will come back if I talk about housing later too, we try to focus on the financial side and leave questions about um, the art and the importance of art in the community and how it's designed to achieve those goals to other committees because we don't uh, view that as finance uh, committee purpose. Dorothy. Well, something that I do think <clears throat> does belong to this committee, and um, way at the beginning of this process, I, I submitted a little um, memo of some things I thought were important for the pub percent for art, and I don't see it here, and that is to do with um, sense of public ownership, uh, buy-in. I noticed that the committee, the art jury, does not have any members of the general public, or more specifically, some of the people who were good would be working in the building. I, I just feel that we need to do a little bit of adjusting there too, because if for this to be successful, it's not how many pennies it's onto your tax bill that's gonna <clears throat> make people feel good or bad about it, but it's if they feel, yes, this is wonderful, this is great, this expresses um, who we are or who the town is or you know, um, some kind of more personal contact with um, people who would be involved with the building and people who are you know, members of the town, but not necessarily artists. Mm -hmm. I think we would be amenable to adjusting the language where it describes the jury to potentially include a member of the public and a, somebody who actively uses the building on a daily basis. I, I would take another look at that for sure. That's still a concern. Mm -hmm. Pat. Um, I supported this in town meeting. I still support it, but I I am having a little bit of concern. We're talking about folding the costs into capital projects and then therefore it doesn't compete with capital projects. And that's not accurate. <laughs> okay. And, and my concern is um, we may need two debt exclusion overrides. And how do we, um, how do we get the public really on board? Because the few pennies, blah, blah, those are people's tax bills, and we're get, I'm getting a lot of pushback from a lot of people about taxes in our town right now, and I, I still so I'm trying to figure out how do you how do you justify, you know, it's yeah. it, I grew up very working class, yeah. so uh, we didn't have uh, we don't we, you don't necessarily need to have a lovely statue or a cl fancy climbing structure to have a good building, and so how do we address that seriously? Yeah, well, I mean, I, the way I present it to people, and once we have these exact numbers, is to really look at, you know, what is the median property tax payment, and exactly how much, if it's bonded over 30 years, would somebody have to pay? And when I've looked at those numbers, the maximum was about $3 and change, and that was only for a few years over that, lifespan. So I think it's, you present it to somebody and say, would you be willing to pay this much money over this number of years to have this type of project in town? And then it's up to them to decide for themselves whether or not I think if it's worth it. I mean, that, that's how I have conversations with people about it. And some people, to some people, it might not be worth it or it might not be financially prudent for the town at this moment, and maybe they can imagine a, a, a moment in the future when that might be the case. In my looking at the town and its finances and my understanding of it, I don't think there will be a better time, and certainly there won't be any big capital projects And after these four that I can imagine any time in the next decade. So it, it's to, to me, it's sort of for this kind of project now or never. There are other ways to raise money for the arts. 
and to have the arts in town. Absolutely. Let's have those too. <laughs> so that's, that's how I have conversations about it. I mean, it's tough. It can be a tough sell. Not everybody is going to agree or want this. So the question is, to, is there enough will in town to see the town support the arts by adding to people's taxes in one way or another? And if there is, then let's do it. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's how I talk to people about it. So I've got a few questions, and since everyone else has asked, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to ask mine. So the qualified arts jury, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, when I read through the bylaw, I couldn't totally figure out what its purpose was in terms of, I mean, I could guess that they are going to weigh in or have some sort of opinion on the proposed, you know, proposals from the artists on what though, but, but there was, to me, when I was reading the bylaw, I couldn't find any concrete non-advisory role of the qualified arts jury, and so I, you know, if that's the case, is it necessary is something I would ask, um, or if you still feel it's necessary, the one thing then I thought was missing was we've defined this qualified arts jury, we refer to it in the bylaw a number of times, but there's a whole responsibility section that talks about the responsibilities of the town and the responsibility of the Public Art Commission, but never actually mm -hmm. talks about the responsibilities of the qualified arts jury. And so that was something I felt was completely maybe missing or unclear. Um, and then to me that actually goes back to one thing Dorothy was saying that I'd like you to comment on, which is, you know, the way this is written I think is the Public Art Commission makes the final decision um, with advice from the qualified arts jury on which project to go with. Um, sometimes the artists and people steeped in arts and visual arts necessarily disagree with what is a fantastic piece of artwork than <laughs> the public that has to stare at it for 30 years. And that goes directly to sort of what Dorothy is. Um, and how do we ensure that when the proposals come in, that the people are actually going to be happy with the one that is chosen? And so I think it goes, <laughs> it goes to Dorothy's yeah. point of, is there a way you could write in that there would be a public vote on the proposal, right. similar to what there was. I'm not, I don't know whether the bid picked the public one, and obviously there's no final decision on that, but when the bandstands, the performing arts stand, the outdoor venue had many submissions, they, they asked for public opinion on that. Um, Right. No, like I said, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with how they did that, but it, it, that could has, we that do... No standing. Right. No, I know, but could so, we, you know, I wouldn't want to say, well, we're doing a vote, but then we're going to ignore that vote, too. So how do we get the buy-in, but also get the, you know, the expertise on things like, is it maintainable, or in three years, is it just going to cost us millions to keep it up? Um, but also give this jury something concrete. <laughs> yeah. So I have a, a very easy answer for that, and I think it has to do with the language or maybe some clarification that's needed. In my mind, the process would work in the same way as the Electrify Amherst uh, project has worked, which is that the jury votes. So the jury actually is the decider. And uh, to my mind, that was how this process would work as well so that you, you get the jury with a mix of qualified people from a variety of arts-related fields and potentially from the public and people who are using the building, and then they vote. And that's, that's the project that ends up getting built. So um, that could be spelled out more strongly. So and that's, and that's, that's the process we've used with Electrify Amherst. So there are stakeholders on, on the jury. There's members of the, of the, um, of the uh, Public Art Commission um, and others, and we, you know, they review proposals, sit down in a room together, and um, the public is invited, although uh, I don't think we've had general members of the public there, um, and then a vote is taken, and then those are the artists who are selected. Uh, maybe Joe? 
Um, yes, Dorothy. Yeah. Well, I, w I would not want to see a big public vote, but I do think that the jury voting, as long as the jury is felt as being representative and fair. Uh, for example, you want the sense of um, ownership of some of the uh, rather heroic art that's on some of the fire stations in New York City. Um, the people who, the firemen, like the art. Uh, the public likes the art. So, and I think by having a broader jury, that it's not just the vote, it's the discussion that goes into it. I think that, you're, that people will learn from each other and that what comes out is not what either one of them might have thought of at the beginning. Um, so that it, it's really something good. Now, if you want to have total free art, then you do it with you know, big people with big private money and they can kind of get permission to put up whatever they want, but um, whether the public likes it or not, like some statues I can think of. But if it's this art that's gonna be owned by the town, we do have to feel that we like it, and I think we can trust in the people of Amherst um, if there's a, a, a good, fair, representative group. Yeah. Um, another question I had. Um, one of the par this one might be easy. One of the paragraphs in section three had a comment from you that said rewritten as necessary or rewrite as necessary to clarify. Um, you know, and this potentially goes to it was paragraph um, the third paragraph in funding. This paragraph will be rewritten as necessary to clarify. Um, so I guess one of the things I was thinking before this bylaw was coming out of the ad hoc committee was that it would be final language. Um, so I'm curious when that paragraph might get rewritten, what it might do and whose job is it, you know, after this conversation, do we essentially, you know, if we're looking at things like, we want the composition of qualified arts jury to be changed, is that a recommendation we make to the council and to the GOL or is that a sort of, is the recommendation to say, send it back to the working group, the ad hoc committee, to make these changes before we're willing to vote on it. That's something I think we as a CRC need to decide that sort of process. But, but to that specific paragraph, when is that rewriting? <laughs> is it going to happen? Is it a holdover from some long ago comment or? That's mostly holdover. It was Sonia. It was a question of just making sure that Sonia was happy, I think, with the final language in that, in that paragraph. Um, and we, were, we were happy with it as, as far as the, um, the committee was concerned. Okay. Um, and then the last question I had goes to the, the interworkings, and, and this was a question, I, I also supported this in town meeting when I was in town meeting. Um, I was bummed the first time that performing arts wasn't in there. I talked to Mr. Brody when I was on town meeting, <laughs> and he explained to me why, you know, as a performing artist, so I was like, oh, you know, he explained to me why, and it totally made sense, and so I was on board, you know, I, I get it. Um, but. That the concern I had back then is also some question I have now about the inner relationship between the definition of construction project and the definition of public building facility or space. Mm -hmm. Because public building facility or space is defined as, um, where is it? Structures, infrastructure, parks, and landscapes. And infrastructure is my big concern. Mm -hmm. um, because then construction project is a capital project um, to construct or remodel public infrastructure, essentially, when you submit, you know, change that, within the corporate limits of the town and with respect to what bidding is required under law. So some of this might be for Andy more than you, mm. but we potentially sometimes bond out bridge work, right. which is infrastructure. Yeah. and some of it will cost over a million dollars. Is, is that something that would fall into this definition such that um, there would either be a need for the town council to say, no, we're not going to apply it to the bridge, um, you know, or, or to put public art on the bridge, and I understand there can, artwork can be on a bridge. <laughs> you can add balusters and stuff. But so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about that in a relationship, how the definitions are done and what is really intended, you know, if it really is just intended for buildings, why is infrastructure, parks and landscapes still included on the definition of public building facilities and spaces? Right, well, it would be a lost opportunity 
if we didn't put public art in our parks. Let's start with that. On the other hand, it's very difficult to do because most of the money that comes in for our park rehabilitation and rebuilding is grant money that's not eligible. Um, as far as bridges are concerned, I'm not sure, but um, one of the things that I had in my mind is that in, um, in Vermont, I believe, there in a sm relatively small town, there were some uh, road projects that were done that actually had roundabouts and that was public art included in those as part of their percent for art program. So that's the kind of infra infrastructure I had in mind. Of course, bridges, you know, may or may not be an interesting place to have public art, but they certainly can be. I mean, the Bridge of Flowers kind of comes to mind, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, but anyway, <laughs> I know it's not the same. Okay, sorry. Uh, but, but uh, you know, that I'd be willing to have a conversation about whether that particular word stays in or not. Um, I would, I imagine that these are the kinds of questions that might come up at the GOL level, but, um, you know, if infrastructure is a big concern, I'm open to. Dorothy? I'm going to speak up for infrastructure. Um, lived in the New York area many, many years, and I travel under uh, bridges and over bridges, and most of them have artwork. Although some bridges that I've traveled in, say, up here in New England, are themselves works of art in the design. So, I mean, that's something that can, you can consider. Art at roundabouts, um, I'm thinking of Block Island. Um, I notice it, wherever it is, I notice it, I remember it, it matters. So I, I don't wanna see it go away. Andy, can you potentially talk about, give me an idea of what projects might be subject to bidding, public bidding, because I know that would limit things too. Do you, do you have an idea? <laughs> Or maybe Dave has an idea better about what might be, you know, I mean, because the definition included, you know, it, it was of which bidding is required under state law. So I understand when we did the temporary station road bridge because it was a structure, there was a determination that it didn't need to go out for bid under state law. Um, so is, is there a distinction? What types, of, you know, do major road rebuilding projects, if we were to say we're going to rebuild 116 or something, you know, would that have to go out to bidding? It would probably cost over a million dollars. I'm, I'm trying to get an idea of what the scope of these two definitions together encompasses. I was gonna echo some of Dorothy's comments about plugging for infrastructure. Um, this is a slightly different question. Um, I'm not on a day-to-day -day basis involved in bidding, so I think we, we, we need to seek Sonia or other staff input on that. Um, on the infrastructure question, question, I was just gonna make a plug that, you know, I too, when I travel, uh, particularly bridges, bridges, bridges are actually wonderful places for public art. When you think of particularly the, the walls, if you will, when you're going over a river, for instance, I'm always troubled that we wall off rivers and so the opportunity to add art to, from a safety standpoint, you may not be able to have spaces between, you know, going over rivers, for instance, or even train tracks, but to add art to those spaces that might reflect the context of where you are. For instance, you're going over the, uh, when I go the back way to the, to the pike and go over the Swift River in uh, the Three Rivers area, uh, over near Palmer. I'm always troubled that the new bridge, which is only about six years old, has a complete concrete wall and you can't see the river. So maybe from a safety standpoint, you couldn't make spaces, but you could reflect fish or wildlife or whatever along that bridge, which would, to Dorothy's point, make make it a an experience going over that bridge. So, But we can look up the, we can get more information on the question of bidding. I, it was just a question I had. It doesn't necessarily need a total answer, but yeah. Bill wanted yeah. to respond to I it. was just going to add to Dave's comment. I, you know, we, we moved here from 
excuse me, the Somerville Medford area, and on the, uh, the, the bridge that passes through where we used to live on 93, the artist who painted the mural, uh, the, the mural on the back of the building in town, um, has this ongoing mural project there where, where he's created these amazing murals, and that's part of their Percent for Art program. Um, so, uh, it, actually, it must be in the Cambridge stretch because it's Cambridge that has the, yeah. sorry, the, uh, the, the program. But, so, bridges have been a, a site for exactly the kinds of thing you're talking about. You think about. of going into Northampton, the, tra the former train trestle, which is now the rail trail bridge, mm -hmm. which often gets hit by trucks, the one that's kind of famous, <laughs> that has had some really beautiful artwork on both sides going into Northampton and, and leaving the downtown for years. And it really does add to your experience going into Northampton, whether you're on a bike or walking or going by a car. Dorothy. I think, I think art adds to a sense of place. For example, when bridges and things look different from each other, you know where you are. You, it, it locates you in space. And I think that one of my concerns uh, at this point in Amherst is wanting to keep some of the distinctiveness of the town, not wanting it to be just uh, an anonymous place that looks like any other town you could go into. And I think that the town's public art is part of its personality and it expresses itself and it, it makes us feel very grounded. So I'm, I'm very for being very inclusive on it. Okay. Andy. I think it's a good discussion to have and I really have appreciated hearing it. I don't know that we want to spend too much time on it because quite frankly, most bridges are built with state grant money and um, I'm not sure how much this is gonna be applicable to this process. Um, when I think of spaces um, that might be covered, I think of things like um, if we build a new elementary school, I wanna have the qualified arts jury to um, be really open to thinking about the entire space of the elementary school, not just the building, as to where it might propose that we consider art. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I, having one child in Wildwood and another about to enter Wildwood, I'm extremely excited to be involved if this gets passed by the council in, you know, making something exciting happen in, in whatever our configuration our new elementary school is. So I, I, I want to welcome Steve, our other member. I know you were a part of the ad hoc committee, so you've probably had much of your say, but do you have any questions? Um, we're sort of on more of the questions for about the bylaw itself right now. No, you're good? Okay. Um, any other questions before we just move into talking about a potential recommendation? Seeing none, I think. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I, I think we can say thank you to to Bill for coming here and spending your Thank time you. and, and presenting and answering our questions. We'll move into sort of starting a discussion on what we might want to recommend and what that recommendation should look like, what our role is. So thank, thank you. you. I'll, I'll stay here, but I'll go back <laughs> into the audience. Yeah. <laughs> um, does anyone want to start that conversation? So, so we need to, <laughs> this was, so, so, so we, we were more talking about questions we had about the okay. bylaw itself, but we were, um, the, the referral was the referred to us, um, you know, to CRC uh, for a report back to the town council. I assume that would report potentially include a recommendation of something. Now that recommendation, I brought this up earlier, what if we've got requests for changes to the bylaw? Is that something we draft and sort of include? Or is that something we would say we have these concerns so we would recommend that the ad hoc committee go back and look at that? You know, what what would our report and recommendation look like? Is it, you know, that and, and frankly what the recommendation is, is a, you know, at some point we'll get to a vote but probably on we recommend passage or not, um, but but we had some other things. So, Andy. Good. So to be very specific, um, you started uh, with the question, Mandy, about the uh, qualified arts jury, and so the question is, where does it come up in this most important place? And so I get back to section five of the proposed bylaw under responsibilities and the responsibilities of the public art commissions include, and then it goes to number five, um, 
soliciting proposals for review and selecting such projects with the assistance of a qualified arts jury and in consultation with key stakeholders, including but not limited to the construction project architects and manager, users of the proposed buildings, neighbors to the project and appropriate town officials and the agencies. I will skip the next sentence. I think that the question that um, you were really getting to and that Dorothy was getting to was whether that statement is sufficient about how the users of the building and the public in general can have input or whether there's something more specific. So, um, obviously, I've been through this and I'm not sure that I have a lot to add that I didn't add at the ad hoc committee. Uh, but um, I think I would encourage um, some consideration as to whether that provision is sufficiently strong. Bill. One suggestion I could make would be to potentially add the final decision on the public artwork shall be made after public hearing by majority vote of the public art commission and the qualified arts jury or some way of um, thinking about folding together. The, the question for me would be how, you know, would it be the full commission? How many members of the commission, if not, would sit on the jury? You know, how many people do we want sitting in on the vote itself um, if we were going to include the jury and change the wording? I mean, right now, as it's written, the commission could potentially ignore the will of the jury. And if, if that's the concern, that might allay it. I mean, one of the things that we thought about a lot when we were redrafting this, I'll just add, is how, how specific do we need to be in the bylaw and then how much do we want to allow to come out in process? Because in process, things will necessarily, there has to be flexibility and the potential for going through it once and going, whoops, we made these mistakes and we wanna do it differently next time. So you don't wanna be overly specific in the bylaw either. And so you're trying to balance um, you know, creating a structure that will be useful for everybody so that they can understand how it will work and then also allowing for some flexibility in the kind of day-to-day -day realization of it. I mean, you guys are familiar with <laughs> legislating, so. Yeah, I mean, so I don't, you know, that provision seems to contradict what you had said earlier about yeah. how Electrify Amherst works. At the same time, maybe it's better than the Electrify Amherst because, and this is where I'm, I'm struggling with qualified arts jury, um, it doesn't have to go with the decision of the arts jury that might contradict what the users of the building are seeking when they see the proposals or what the public's seeking. The Public Art Commission, which is appointed um, from a sort of potentially a broader array of people because it doesn't have as strict guidelines as this qualified art jury does for um, qualifications, um, might be the better group to make the final decision. I, I don't know, but it was something that caught my attention as I was thinking this. Um, and I, I don't know what people are thinking, but maybe it is our public art commission that should be able to overrule the thoughts of the qualified art ju jury. I mean, on the, on the other hand, to play devil's advocate, the jury would be appointed by the committee, but the, and the there would be a committee members on the jury, but there would be a little bit of distance there too. So um, I, the process it could work. It can work either way for sure. And I don't see this as being something that um, we need to get hung up on at this point. But uh, I defer. <laughs> yeah. Dorothy, I have a question. You know, thinking about the past, the art was included in lots of things. Uh, how did they do it? I mean, oh. for example, the Coolidge Bridge, it's got art on it. Or it is, it, it has design, let's put it that way. It has, it has design, <laughs> which design. is not structural. <laughs> right. I know, but, but there, is, there is surface treatment on that, yeah. which is beyond the utilitarian. Yeah. So how was that done? I, I think it would be yeah. interesting to, to, to check out how it was done because 
art has been put on public places, in public places, using public money for many, many years. And I know sometimes there's a big outcry, but I don't have, haven't heard any funny stories about Amherst having a, an art fit. So um, take a look. That's all. Pat. I also want to say that there have been many art movements that have called forth the basics of utilitarianism and, and made us realize how beautiful they were. The whole thing, a lot of, of this um, speaks to elitism and um, an image of Amherst that is not necessarily really reflected of the economic diversity that we have in town. And that brings my hackles up um, in many ways. And um, so <laughs> art is in the eye of the beholder. I wonder if you actually, we did a poll of people of all types, if you'd find that the demarcation is as strict as you think it is. So at some point we need to get to a recommendation. Um, I, oh sure, um, Pat. Uh, I was thinking when you brought up um, whether we have some issues with the bylaw and I think that our recommendations should include those to the council because the, and, and to GOL, um, because we're working, uh, just like the finance recommendations are important, we're working across committees. So I don't think we should only um, share de, um, design issues. I think that the, each of these things has impact and we can send it to GOL. So that's my answer. Steve? I'm coming late to the conversation, but I, I thought I would weigh in with a little bit of history of architecture. But so um, what you all are bringing up is a really good point, like the Coolidge Bridge. And, and so we used to know how to do this, right? We used to know how to organically integrate what we now, you know, art into architecture was. And then um, for a, a, a million different reasons, uh, new technology, um, an interest in paring down, sort of getting away from ornamentalism, we sort of forgot how to do that. So really the purpose of these kinds of laws is to bring back into the DNA something that we used to know how to do. So I think a corollary are, is form-based zoning. So we used to know how to build communities like Amherst, right? So the downtown Amherst around the common. And then that was all done without any zoning. So then we forgot how to do that. And then we thought we, you know, knew how to do it by <laughs> introducing zoning, which did even a worse job. And so now <laughs> things like form-based zoning have come back as a way of bringing back something that once was in our DNA. So that's why I'm supporting this, is that we had, uh, had a great history in Amherst and elsewhere in Massachusetts of really valuing art beyond just buildings. And then, um, something happened that, uh, and so this is a way of sort of reintroducing part of our, our reactivating those genes. Pat? Um, a total aside again, it seems to be my leitmotif for the day. Um, the first time I saw um, Van Gogh's uh, Starry Night was in the Guggenheim. Um, I was a teenager. And as I came up the curve, I saw it. It was on a corner wall. And I burst into tears. So believe me, I understand the value of art. But I also understand the value of simplicity, the value of nature, uh, and that those things, you know, um, if we think about some of the things that have happened um, with natural design uh, in art. So I just get tired of, um, never mind doesn't matter what I get tired of, but I have a very broad and expansive sense of why the arts are important. I just don't like some of the language that we choose to use that makes it exclusive, makes it different. And one more thing, since I'm on a roll, if you're gonna put art in the school, in the building, or on the playground, there need to be children on that jury because they're the ones who are gonna be using it so the jury needs to be very, very flexible, and we need to really ask the people of Amherst what they want, and we're not good at that. We pretend. Thank you. 
So one of the things I was going to say is, I'm going to bring this back to something we might see at our, our no, our, our retreat, actually, which is what this committee is tasked with making a recommendation, and what do we consider and what should we discuss when making that recommendation? And way back a year ago, there was a town meeting advisory committee proposal for a community impact report. And I have been working on potential modifications on how CRC might be able to use that to structure conversations. And so I just want to mention some of the broad areas that we probably as a CRC need to at least think about when saying yes, no to something. You know, we seem to all recognize the importance of art, but how might this bylaw affect various other items in town? And so those sort of areas were, I had seven listed, one of which was financial, um, but was cultural, natural, and, and historic. Um, so, you know, museums, historic buildings, neighborhoods, traditional customs, natural areas, um, economic, you know, how's it gonna affect economics, employ, employment, business development, town budgets, taxes, tourism, vibrancy, crime schools were some of the options there. Environment, open space, and recreation, um, commons, parks, recreational land, wildlife, Architect, agricultural lands, housing and land use, um, you know, various things on that that include house prices, rent, supply, demand, affordability, infill, construction, all sorts of things. Social, neighborhoods, businesses, college students, area character, noise, visual, sustainability, transportation services, and facilities. So that, that very wide right there, energy demand, energy resources, pedestrians, traffic, complete streets, services, that, that one's a very broad one. And then the financial, you know, the lifetime value, expenses to towns and residents, the real cost of that, that probably falls better into the finance committee discussion there um, and all. But, but when I look at that list myself, I, I don't see, other than the financial potential, you know, that certainly is a drawback of the cost to the town, the cost to the residents there. You know, when I look at the social, the neighborhoods, we've, we've touched on some of that, the historic, the cultural, um, the economic. In theory, this could potentially bring people into town to spend not just to look at the art, but to spend money in town. It could bring neighborhoods together. It could bring, you know, it could have good social impacts on, on some of that stuff. Um, you know, some of it, it might not actually affect housing and land use. Maybe, maybe not, um, depends on, who's building stuff and all. But, but if we look at it, if I look at it in that lens, I see many benefits and few drawbacks, especially with what I, I wanna say I appreciate the committee having included in the bylaw, the ability of if there are major delays to pull out for the council to say, you know, public art in this particular area really isn't appropriate and so we're going to exempt this project from the bylaw. Those things I think really limit the drawbacks that were presented and potentially there for prior bylaws. Um, so if any other people want to comment on those sort of areas or things like that, that'd be great. That's my thoughts on them. I, I would like to recommend it and to, to say that we had some um, but we needed more thought on the uh, jury, and um, I, and I do think that's right. The, the jury should be the flexibility and inclusiveness of the juries. Um, I do think it's funny just thinking about it. We're, we're in a row here. We have three performing artists: dance, theater, and music. And we're, our our part <laughs> we have been eliminated, <laughs> right? But so we we and 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 Steve is the one who's architect of the permanent building. So. Um, we do have, we do have some people here who know about art and its relationship to people. Yeah. You can give us money for pub, for performing arts. We'll take it. <laughs> We'd love to uh, produce performing arts events. That would be fantastic. So, is this something the committee feels we're ready to vote on a recommendation today, or should we pause this conversation and come back at an at the next meeting with a recommendation. Um, we can vote on a recommendation. I can draft a report that includes things like some of the benefits we've identified, some of the concerns we have, but despite those concerns, you know, we're recommending it, but we, you know, the biggest concern was that jury um, and potential language surrounding who is on it, how it's decided, 
what their role is versus other roles. Um, it's not necessarily fatal to the passage of the bylaw, but there were significant concerns. But it's, it's the construction of the jury as it relates to the relationship of the art to the public and, and the town's, the town's buy-in of. Andy. So um, I'm gonna comment in two different ways. Um, first is to say that if a majority of the committee believes that um, there ought to be changes to the composition of the jury or the functioning of the jury, I think that um, that has to be very explicit in the recommendation of the committee. It is, um, we can't um, put that off for later because there's nobody, there's no later to put it off to. Um, you know, if you're recommending um, the bylaw as it was drafted by the ad hoc committee, um, then you're making that recommendation. If you are recommending it with changes, we have to be very explicit about what the changes are because we are a legislative committee. Um, so that's, uh, I think, the major point. I think that my uh, personal feeling is, is that I um, am happy with where we came out with on the question of how the jury is structured and the flexibility that it provided. Um, but, um, you know, it's sort of, this is one of these awkward places where because I was on the ad hoc committee, um, I'm in a different space, so I really respect what my colleagues here um, who are looking at it for the first time um, have to say about it and the observations that you've made. So I, I do want to comment on the qualified arts jury. I know we've all had different thoughts on it and different concerns about it. Um, Many of mine have been alleviated. I want to point out to Dorothy, who's concerned about the membership of it, that there's no set number in the definition, so it's a varying size, but it also only requires all of those experts to be a majority. Um, you know, a group appointed by the town manager that shall include a majority of professionals who work in the arts, which means it does not eliminate public from that jury, it does not potentially eliminate children from that jury if it's going in, or, or educators in the school where that item would happen. Um, I guess I have happen. one question. Are the, is the qualified jury made up of Amherst residents who have these understandings? Or are you thinking about people from outside of Amherst? I mean, that just came to me. And <laughs> well, the, I mean, it's open. That, that could be something that could, would come out in process. I mean, in my mind, um, it, would, it would be built of people from Amherst, but you know, we might want to pull in somebody from neighboring town or maybe somebody from Cambridge from there. But, you know, I mean, why not if somebody was willing to step up who's worked on the Percent for Art program in Cambridge and wanted to help us out? That would be fantastic. So why would we exclude having somebody from the outside? So the way I read it, it would be a multiple member body and under the charter, multiple member bodies need to be composed of residents of the town of Amherst unless the town council um, votes, you know, specifically says a non-resident is okay. You know, the manager could propose non-residents. I believe we've done this once before for either water supply or ag or something, ag commission, um, where so they could be, but, but the default is under the charter for a multiple member body town residents. And Steve, not Andy. <laughs> I think this needs some thought, and I don't know if it needs to get resolved now, but there's also a very good argument to be made that it shouldn't be people from Amherst in the same way designer selection of the, you know, say of the school will not happen. It will not be the people of Amherst that make that decision. It's basically a, a standing body of the Massachusetts School Building Authority with Amherst input. So in, in some ways there's a, a um, benefit to having people that are not outsiders, basically. So I don't, I don't know how this gets resolved now, or, but I, I think that we can also go ahead with, with trust that we will resolve this. 
So I think what I'm gonna do, given the time we have, um, we're gonna postpone a vote and recommendation on this um, till the 29th meeting. What I would like, that what, what, well, what I'm hearing is that there's concern about the definition of the jury, unless everyone's okay with moving forward with it as defined. Um, uh, I, I'm taking Andy's potential recommendation that if we make a recommendation to the council and we want language changes, we should come in with what those language changes are. Um, it's possible since it's a bylaw that if we wanted the charter default not to apply, it might be possible to say because that would be sort of considered a, a vote of the council, a majority vote of the council to put into the bylaw that that non-residents may be include. You know, you might be able to do that, and if that's something that's really important, I think we should come up with language. And I'm not sure drafting that language right now today is the most efficient use of our time versus people thinking about it and coming to the next meeting with potential language, but I'm open to thoughts. Well, I think that the two parts of the bylaw that talk about the um, jury, 5-5 um, five, five and um, the one on the first page, 2-6, um, if you put them together, I, I, I really hadn't done that. If you put them together and every, I think it's possible for um, you and some of the community members uh, from the um, uh, ad hoc group to th take what we've talked about in consideration, put it together uh, in, in language and send it to us so we could respond. And if in fact we do uh, agree, this could be moved forward. I mean, it has really gotten better as time has gone on. I mean, that's, that's the good thing. It, it, the picture is becoming clearer. I think we're very close to it. Uh, as long as there is, some of the things you've said, there's no set number on the jury, um, that it may include these variety of people, the relationship of the jury to the art commission, and that something that nobody's been mentioning, but I think it says that, that overall the town manager is in charge. Isn't that in here somewhere? He, has, he would have appointing authority over a multi-member body, so. So if that was like all put together and, and discussed more, I think that, because some of these questions are, the uh, town council as a whole is gonna want to go into this in detail. This is one of the major areas I think that they're gonna be wanna talk about. I think Andy's done a great job in um, responding about so the financial implications so that many of those questions that people would have have been answered. So I, I think that, um, this could, the language could be put together and could be sent to us and maybe we could be able to bring it to the town council meeting. Pat? Um, I'd like to, I guess I'm responding to how long it's taken this poor bylaw to <laughs> get to where it could be implemented. And so I feel more comfortable, I guess, with some of the, um, of recommending it um, knowing that GOL is going to look at it as well. Um, so I, I feel like I can go with the language the way it is because it's not completely specific in terms of the jury. And that, I don't know. I just hate making it wait because that means February if we're lucky. It just feels odd. So I'm happy to be overruled. Do I hear a motion from anyone? <laughs> um. I'll pass you to the right. <laughs> I made recommend a recommendation to the council. Uh, to the reflect uh, this bylaw on this plan. I have a question. Can I, can I ask, your, recommend, your motion wants to recommend the council adopt the bylaw? Is that what your motion is trying to get to? Um, so then I think the motion that you would make, if I've got language correct, would be to recommend the town council adopt the percent for art bylaw as presented by the ad hoc committee. 
Is, I don't want to put words in your mouth, no, no, so. So we can yeah. do a separate motion after that okay. about that. Yeah, at, at the end of the ad hoc committee process, we actually had a brief discussion as to whether we should dissolve the ad hoc committee. And I suggested that we not dissolve the ad hoc committee at that point, because if comments came from any of the committees that were reviewing it, which was CRC and finance, that, um, and it got referred back to the committee to do additional work um, in relation to comments, that the committee still be in existence in order to uh, reconvene and do that. Um, and so we did not dissolve as a committee. Um, the key thing for me is that I do not want us to get to the point where we get so far with any of the four major projects that um, the bylaw doesn't get applied to that project because we delayed. Um, that's the practical side of the whole thing. And um, I don't see any of them moving on a track that is that fast. The one that is moving on the fastest track potentially because of the um, Mass Board of Library Commissioners um, is the library. The library is one building that I'm not sure um, where it fits into the process because it's not a town building. Um, but when you get to the school, DPW and the fire station, they certainly are not going to be affected if we have a few months of additional time to address um, concerns that counselors may have. Given that, Pat, do you still wish to make that motion? No. Okay. Do we want another motion now or do we want to come back later with a motion? Because I can, given what Andy said, given what Dorothy said, I could foresee us making a motion to recommend the town council refer this back to the Percent for Art Bylaw Ad Hoc Committee for revision of the qualified arts jury language, something like that. Um, I don't know whether I'm, that's a great motion, but <laughs> in terms of wording, um, but I, yeah. I think that with a statement of uh, strong interest and support uh, so that the town council knows that this is still puttering along, but it's in a very positive direction. Oh, Bill, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so I would say we could have further discussion about the jury issue, and I, I apologize for mispresenting the Electrify Amherst project, which I had in the forefront of my mind because we got our next round of funding for that with this and the way the jury structure was different from how we presented this. I feel like that got us off track a little bit. <clears throat> but the way I see it is we have two models on the table to follow something closer to what we've been doing for Electrify Amherst or to, to do uh, the model that's actually in the, in the bylaws presented to you, which actually gives the commission the final vote. And um, that would be the conversation I would wanna have when we got back, but we may come back to you with the same thing and say we've talked about it further and we feel like the better option is the one we have here. Um, and so I just wanted to point that out. So I think, why don't I make a motion? Because I, I, I feel like the committee wants to do something today, not postpone some sort of recommendation three weeks. Um, so I'm gonna move to recommend the town council refer the percent for art bylaw back to the ad hoc committee to address concerns regarding the membership of the qualified arts jury and its role in the process, in the, in the art selection process. 
in the process. So that's the motion I'm going to make. Do I hear a second from anyone on that motion? Dorothy seconds. Do we have any discussion on that motion? Steve. So now I'm confused as to whether or not this actually would be a multi-member body or not, because the way it's being the way it's being presented is the Arts Commission is the multi-member body, and then they basically are being delegated authority to create a jury. So I guess some clarification on our part would be necessary. So for me, part of it is do I trust the process that got us to the Arts Commission that will then appoint the jury? Because I'm not sure that we want the, well, I don't know, so maybe this is what needs to be discussed. I don't, I don't think we need to get to the point where we're the appointers of the jury or the even the town manager is the appointer. Of so the, the, the town manager, manager is, I'm the sorry, the town manager the is the appointer. <laughs> so the definition of multiple member body in the charter is any board commission, committee, subcommittee, or other body consisting of two or more persons, whether elected, appointed, or otherwise constituted, but not including the town council, school committee, or library right. trustees. <laughs> Andy. You know, I think that I was conscious of the charter provision that you just read when we had the discussion and with many things that happened in that committee because we did, did a lot of work together. If there was an issue that seemed to be being resolved in a logical matter that was, in this case, consistent with the charter, I was happy with it and just didn't even raise the issue. Are we ready to vote on this motion? Do you believe we need more discussion? So I'm seeing no other discussion, so I'm gonna call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion to recommend the town council refer the percent for art bylaw back to the ad hoc committee to address concerns regarding the membership of the qualified arts jury and its role in the process, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Aye, that is three. Oh, no, nope. Andy, four. Uh, all those against, raise your hand and say no. Uh, anyone abstaining? We have five votes, so no abstentions. Um, that motion passes four to one. I will draft up a memo for the town council meeting for the 27th to present those recommendations to the town council. Given that recommendation, I am not going to forward this from CRC to GOL saying we are done with it, because um, I don't think we're done with it, <laughs> so, since we're seeking changes. Um, going back to our, thank, thank you, Bill. Um, yeah, getting back to our agenda, I think given the timing, I am going to say we are not going to get to the presentation and discussion item today, Dave, if you want to let you, you may have already let Christine and Chris, Chris and Rob go, but we've got a half an hour and we've got one more big discussion coming in minutes. And so I would just say, let them know that that will just get postponed to another meeting. Um, so we're going to skip 4A, we're not there yet, but I was just gonna announce that we're not going to get to that today. Um, the next item on the agenda is the downtown parking study and memo from the downtown parking working group that was referred to us. I drafted a memo um, based on the comments that this committee made last meeting. Um, that memo was put in the folder and packet. It is addressed to the town council from the CRC. We were referred this downtown parking working group um, priority recommendations to report back to the town council. Um, so that is why the memo is not addressed to you guys from me. It is the draft of what the report back to the town council would look like in the form of a memorandum. Um, it is marked draft because this is what I am hoping CRC may vote to adopt. Um, 
I tried to summarize our conversations and I tried to, in the bold, come up with what our vote might look like. That is the part that I kind of made up um, based on the conversation, so I don't know what people think about that, but let's discuss this. I would really like to get this one off CRC's plate and move this back to the council for the council's next meeting as a report. Um, so thoughts on the memo? Okay. Well, I, I have a question. I'm still digesting the new, the suggested new committee TSO, which I believe would then have parking um, under it. And um, I'm also looking at this, and I'm dealing with people who are desperate to deal, have to do something on Lincoln Avenue about parking. And the way has not opened yet. Uh, we don't know how it's going. So I look at this and say, all right, so if we do have appoint somebody in charge of parking, um, where is this position? Who's supervising them? Just really, how does it go for people to come to, what would the process be to go deal with some parking issue under this? So this is a person in charge and some money to run it. Those are the two recommendations that we were gonna push, but I still don't see how, how it works. Andy. I guess the uh, first one is uh, in relation to what was just raised. Uh, this is a recommendation of the downtown parking working group and um, Lincoln Avenue is not technically a part of downtown, and this position is being envisioned to manage parking process within the area that that working group was considering. So I'm not uh, sure that uh, we envision this position or the working group was envisioning this position as being the group that would be in, uh, involved with neighborhood parking issues, uh, Lincoln being the current one, but it not being the only one that I've experienced in my lifetime on the select board and now the council. Um, so let me uh, throw that out. The, the other thing that I want to touch on is an entirely different subject, and I'll leave it to the chair as to whether I should mention it or hold it until we complete this discussion. Um, I just want to respond to that, and then I'll, I'll let you move on. So I, I actually disagree with Andy saying Lincoln is not involved in downtown. The study that, this is, that these priority recommendations came from actually included Lincoln Avenue parking as part of downtown available parking spots, um, unregulated, but but parking itself. So this position in theory, th that study, that, that consultant took a very large view of what downtown was compared to what some people generally think of downtown. So um, even if the position is envisioned to manage parking within downtown, that would likely include mm -hmm. Lincoln Avenue and the issues that the Lincoln Avenue residents are having because their request actually competes with mm -hmm. parking availability in downtown as envisioned by the consultant's report. And now you can go on with your other question. <laughs> no, I, I understand the point you're raising I, as to what is the definition of downtown and Lincoln is kind of on the edge and it's uh, because it's not part of the permit parking area. That's why I uh, distinguished it because I was le leaving downtown as the areas that were encompassed there and this is a valid discussion to have. And I didn't want to cut off discussion which is why I didn't want to bring up the other thing. The, the, um, there's several points where um, we talk about uh, having supplement, uh, going back in future guidelines uh, for the uh, financial guidelines, uh, and I don't think that that's necessary, and I would be looking at that very closely, and I went back, obviously, to look at what we just passed in the council for FY21 guidelines, mm -hmm. and what it says, and I'll try and not read the whole thing, because it's pretty long, 
Nevertheless, the council would like to work with you to consider the need, cost, other challenges, and benefits of addressing some important unmet needs. These needs include, then there was a list of six because I left it as a open list that could be added to by the council, but um, one of which was moving forward with the three recommendations of the downtown parking working group. So, and then it says consistent with the budget philosophy discussed above, if additional funds become available, the council will want these issues considered as you develop a short prioritized list of, for budget additions. So it, we actually were very careful in the Finance Committee in recommending this to the council, and it was adopted as recommended to um, leave it that these issues um, should be considered for need, cost, ch other challenges and benefits of addressing uh, the, those important needs kind of separate from whether they would get funded or not, recognizing that they are financial issues that uh, we'd like the manager to consider. So I will have comments about um, some of the suggested language, but I don't that it all goes into the um, same theme that I don't think we need to do anything more than say, consistent with the guidelines we've already adopted, we suggest you do something. I, I just want a clarification from Sandy. Did you just read the other things on that list of six? Just as a reminder. She wants that list read. Um, I can, um, but I really didn't want to get in, don't want to get into a discussion of them. If it would be by preference, but uh, the first one was staffing in our fire EMS services. The second was, uh, I mean, it was there. I, I, mean, I was hoping we would. Uh, Is number one. It, it, it was, uh, unfortunately, I think 1130 at night when we discussed it, so I'm not sure. I tried to get the council to go there, but the council really wanted to go somewhere else called home. Um, so I, I could go through those potential changes, but are there any other general comments? Um, one is about Lincoln Avenue. Well, what is downtown? The neighborhood that I, one of the neighborhoods I represent is on the edge of downtown. And for example, permit parking uh, is allowed on a residential street and people cannot park in front of their own houses that they own. So, uh, and there's a very strong feeling that um, we are very, very involved in downtown, and downtown keeps uh, coming into the neighborhood. So we do not have a structure that can deal with our parking problems. This is not going to solve it. It's, it's something, you know, and it was recommended by the um, consultants. So I'm, I'm not against these recommendations, but I have the strong sense that there's just a world of confusion beyond this. So I'm going to go back to Andy's that he was going to seek some changes on the draft language regarding the budget guidelines. I think the first one is potentially in the bolded part of what the vote would be on. Um, you know, where I just drafted some language, the council priorities prioritize these three strategies through the setting of town manager goals and budget guidelines. Um, I, was your recommendation to delete the and budget guidelines section of that? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm making some track changes on here so I can keep track of that. Um, and then the next paragraph underneath of that um, actually referenced the current guidelines, um, recognizes the current budget guidelines for this year include working with the manager to consider the needs cost challenges with the fifth unmet need being moving forward with the downtown parking working group. So therefore our report suggests supports the council's current budget guidelines on these recommendations. I'm not sure you were suggesting any changes to that language, is that correct? Um, yeah, I, it's possible that that was a, I looked at various options there as you indicate. Okay. Um, the, under each recommendation, the last paragraph talks about 
where the recommendation comes from. So right among the last paragraph of recommendation number one, because implementation of this recommendation would fall under the manager's executive and budget authority, CRC recommends including it in the manager's goals for the year and the council budget guidelines. You would just recommend deleting that and budget authority and then and the council budget guidelines. It's on page two, second paragraph. We, we could also just modify it to CRC recommends including this recommendation in the manager's goals for the year and recognizes it is already included in the council budget guidelines. Yeah, I think that's good. And so the though would just, would just add, we would just add the phrase and recognizes it is already included in the council budget guidelines. Oh, then. consistent with the guidelines. Just recognizes it is consistent with that, that better language for people? consistent with. Um, recommendation two, I think, is full, you know, is that because final implementation of this recommendation would fall under, the, this is again the last paragraph on page two, would fall under the manager's budget authority, CRC, you know, I guess this one said CRC recommends including this recommendation in the council's budget guidelines. We could just say CRC recognizes it is consistent with council budget guidelines. And then recommendation three would just be the same change as under recommendation one because I think the sentence is the same. Um, recommends including this recommendation in the manager's goals for the year and then it would say recognizes it is consistent with the council budget guideline, the council's budget guidelines, something like that. Are, are there any other changes related to that comment, Andy, that you thought we needed to make in this report? No, I think we've got the uh, intent of what I was saying that I just think we should recognize the guidelines already go somewhere and let's go use it. Okay. Any other thoughts on the report as drafted? So I want to point out that I added an extra recommendation. Um, you know, so, so in this vote that I envisioned, um, you know, that we recommend the council prioritizes these three strategies through the setting of town manager goals. Um, CRC also recommends the council finance committee make a recommendation regarding the minimum percentage of the transportation fund that should be dedicated to improvements and parking in the downtown. That might actually need to be reworded to recommends the town council refer to the finance committee. Um, And I don't know whether people support that one, but I added it in there because I thought we as a CRC decided we were not the correct committee to make any concrete recommendations on any particular minimum percentage. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's in there. Um, I am welcome and happy to hear any thoughts on that and including delete it. <laughs> but that, as I was writing this, that's one thing I thought people would would logically follow from the discussion that we had. And I wanted to point it out specifically. Well, yep, it's, it's a very technical issue. So the finance committee in consultation with town staff, perhaps, I mean, how do you determine a percentage? Just you know, arbitrarily, you have to have somebody say what, what real costs are. That is how the Finance Committee normally does things. We uh, heavily rely on consultation with the town manager and with the uh, finance director uh, in order to make uh, do analysis and make recommendations. Uh, we are a heavily staff supported committee as was referenced earlier when I said that uh, we were relying on Sonia to do some work on 
our percent for art calculations. So as finance chair, would you be okay with the wording as is here? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, any other thoughts on this report? Um, are we ready to make the motion referenced in the report? I'm happy to do it myself since I have the modified language in front of me, um, or I'm happy to read it and have someone else technically make it. <laughs> So I'll just make it then. I move to recommend the council prioritize, well, I move that the CRC recommend the council prioritize, I had these three strategies, um, that the downtown parking working group's priority, well, hold on, let me, let me. How about accept the recommendation of the downtown parking working group? Accept. Yep, okay. Okay, so let's try this again. I move that the CRC recommend the town council accept the recommendation of the downtown parking working group through the setting of town manager goals. It also recommends the council refer to the finance committee to make a recommendation regarding the minimum percentage of the transportation fund that should be dedicated to improvements and parking in downtown. Do I hear a second to that motion? Second. Any discussion on it? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. I see a five members in favor. Since our committee is made of five members, that is a unanimous vote. Thank you for the affirmation. <laughs> I don't have to ask for the other ones. <laughs> okay. That takes care of that. item on the agenda, which brings us to, I had already said we would postpone item 4A on this agenda due to time. Um, I didn't think given where we were 15 minutes ago, we'd be able to have a nice significant discussion to continue. Um, so we are postponing 4A. That brings us to the minutes, item 5A on our agenda, um, December 4 and December 18 minutes. Um, I am going to bring up mine of these. The, we're going to start with the December 4th minutes. I already received one request for modification, um, which is that the members present list Steve Schreiber and the counselors absent be none. He attended that meeting until approximately 940, at which time the, he left and the minutes already indicate he left. So it was kind of an odd, <laughs> he's absent, but he left the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I was partially there, partially there, yeah. <laughs> so, so the recommendation, you know, that, that request is to move Steve up to a member present and, and absent is none. Um, and then it's already indicated that he left early and that he was then absent for some of the later votes. Are there any other requests to amend the December 4th minutes? Any other requested amendments? No, okay, we're gonna do these two motions together instead of separate motions. Um, and so that, I, I will take any requested amendments to the December 18th minutes. Um, I had just clerical, um, which was the members present and members absent in these December 18th minutes just listed our last names and we tend to just list our full names, I think. Um, so I would just put our first names into them too. Otherwise it just looks really weird <laughs> to me. But otherwise, I didn't have any requested changes. Does anyone else? No. Okay, so then I will accept a motion to adopt the December 4th, 2019, and December 
18, 2019 minutes as amended. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Pat moves. Second. Andy seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 We've got five votes in favor. That's a unanimous vote. which brings us to announcements. Um, I put this, I, I just wanna discuss, and I should probably pull up my memo. Um, it was in the memo that I wrote, the report I wrote to the town council on, um, for our last meeting. The, I just wanna give you guys though an update on what the December 18th attendance, my appearance in front of planning board was. I tried to summarize it for the town council, so I will announce it at this meeting sort of in that summary. Um, I just have to find it in my memo. That's the wrong one. So pardon me while I bring it up here. Um, oh well. So the appearance at the planning board meeting. Um, I think I was in front of them for an hour to an hour and a half, somewhere like that. Dave, Dorothy, is that about right? It was like an hour, wasn't it? It was an hour. Um, answering questions and all. Um, from my point of view, most of the questions related to we're, we're more concerned with the planning board's role in this than the process that we had presented, which is why I went ahead and presented our process to the town council. Um, you know, they, they were concerned with the definition of necessary and obvious, but I responded, that's sort of our thinking, but they're the ones that ultimately determine what that is, um, that that was sort of a way of us as a council signaling no full rewrite. It's, it's how I responded when they asked about the six month timeline and how they would get it done. It was also a way of signaling, we're not looking for extensive changes here. We just kind of want an update and, and a confined update. Um, there was planning board discussion and questions about who writes the language and how do just changes and edits in general, revisions in general to a master plan get to the planning board. Um, so is that something the council presents? Is that something the staff presents? Is that something the planning board makes up themselves? So a lot of questions around that process. My response to them was this, what we were proposing does not envision the council or the CRC making actual language recommendations prior to that final draft report. Um, you know, they asked a question about why the CRC did not recommend just adopting the master plan as is. And so I explained to uh, them what our conversation around that was. Um, they had a question about the phrase changes in town priorities since the approval of the master plan in item number two. Um, so I did admit that that clause might be a bit vague, but um, I didn't think it was vague, so vague to open up the process extensively um, and then you know beyond that much of the you know there were a lot of questions about how the planning board would get done the work uh, which doesn't really apply to us as, as the community resources committee um, and one question about whether the town council could give the planning board feedback on that on the revisions multiple times throughout the process um, I explained that that's certainly a possibility if they want feedback multiple times. This process that we were presenting envisions sort of one big one, but if they're seeking more, we're open to that. Um, and then there was the talk about the possibility of the town ending up with two master plans um, due to the charter requirements. So we spent a little bit of time dissecting the difference between approval and adopt and the state law regarding who's ma what master plan governs the town and all of that, that and, and how the process we were proposing is an attempt to avoid the 
town council adopting a master plan that is has not actually been approved by the planning board that the goal is to have them be the same document um, that's what my memory of the conversation was when I got back to my house afterward because I did not take notes during the conversation Dorothy was there the whole time so I welcome any additional thoughts Dorothy had on that um, as this announcement just to report what I was doing well, I, I was at a, um, a subcommittee uh, when uh, some of the people on the planning board uh, reported that, that the town council wanted a complete um, updating of the master plan of the zoning, and there was great consternation. And I, don't, I, did, you know, I didn't say anything about it. I was just observing that meeting. So I think your major role was to um, acknowledge the planning board's major role in such language and doing their work but that um, we hadn't adopted the master plan. We wanted to do really, I think necessary and obvious are pretty good words. Um, some of the things that were at this moment obvious and easy to do, and maybe approaching a couple of things that uh, were necessary because of changes that had happened since, but that we were not talking about anything major, nor were you planning to take power an authority away from the planning board, but we were going to work together on this. And I think you did a good job in doing that. So, Thank you. Any questions on that? So any other announcements for this committee? Any topics not anticipated? Things people want to bring up? Seeing none, I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 1120. Thank you all. <laughs>